you again. Who let you in? Well, while you're here, this is DW, and this is video number two. I would like to talk about, oh, wait, wait, wait. First, what I am not smoking, but would really like to be, out of a Jesse Jones pipe would be Dan Tobacco's Virginia Slices. Sadly, indoors, have to save this for later. Let me put it aside. So as I was saying, what I would like to talk about today is some of the tobaccos that I procured while at the St. Louis Pipe Show this last weekend. It was an excellent show. It started Friday night with a social event, followed by uh, early Saturday morning with uh, the show proper. Uh, many attended, um, even, even Snowfall, that was relatively minuscule, but people take real seriously around here, didn't keep people away. It was a, it was a packed house. Hopefully I'll include a picture or two so you can sort of get a feel for uh, how it all went. Um, but let's jump right in. Um, I went there with no real goals in mind other than to buy, buy, buy. And, uh, and that I did. Um, today I'm just going to talk about the tobaccos, but uh, in a subsequent video, no doubt, I'll talk about some of the pipes that I picked up there. Um, a couple of really interesting um, pipes, unique pipes, one in particular by Anthony Harris that I'm excited to show you at some point. Um, but let's jump right in, and then uh, I have a little sort of special story about a couple of the tobaccos. Um, so the first tobacco um, that really caught my eye that I've enjoyed in the past is Smoker's Haven Best Blend, 20th anniversary. Never mind. It replaces Best Blend. It's the Smoker's Haven 20th anniversary. Um, I've had this once before, although it was some time ago. Um, sort of the unknown fact of these tobaccos is they're actually made by Germain. Not so unknown, people know. Um, and uh, they're, they're, you know, highly rated and uh, always worth getting when you can find them. Um, these days, they're hard to come by. It's sold out, but you can still pick them up at shows. In addition to the 20th anniversary, I picked up some Smoker's Haven Select Mixture, another uh, wonderful, um, slightly more Virginia forward uh, blend, also made by Germains. Um, and then the other three tins I picked up of, uh, of note all came from the same lot. Um, I picked up um, a tin of Ensoda Bed, a uh, not so old but somewhat old tin of uh, Durbar, Dunhill. And finally, probably the star of the show, in fact, uh, it goes by that very name, is uh, Dark Star. And uh, this McClellan tobacco um, is from 2008. And as you can see, uh, it only cost me $15. So I was very happy to pick that up. The interesting thing about these three tobaccos here is that they all came from the same place. And uh, that place was um, a woman who was selling sort of the pipe estate of her deceased father. And it was interesting because um, sort of everyone in the pipe show, you know, you do your little rounds, you do your circuit, knew that there was sort of um, a smattering of this and that, pipes, tobacco stands. Um, and uh, the story was that her, her father passed away and she was looking to um, sell these items. But what I didn't know until I spent some time speaking with her is that I actually knew her father. Um, he was a member of the Viking uh, Pipe Club, and uh, I uh, attend that pipe club. And so I ended up interacting with this wonderful gentleman on several occasions. Um, very interesting guy. He was an old uh, professor um, of religions, and particularly Old Testament religions. Um, and so it was really, really cool to spend a little time talking to her uh, reminiscing about her father, who I who I really enjoyed interacting with, um, and um, you know, sort of being part of that. Um, what I thought was so interesting was that pipe tobacco was such a large part of his life that it ingrained um, every aspect of his relationships, including the ones with his children. And so, this selling of all of his sort of prized possessions was really a sort of emotional and almost therapeutic thing um, for his daughter. Um, she really had the opportunity in a strange way to sort of connect with him again, uh, even a, a year or so after his death, 
and kind of reliving some of these emotions and, and talking about the pipe memories that she had with the various people that came by. Um, it, was, it was emotional and, it, and I think it was very healthy. Um, it was very good for me. Uh, it was really pleasant to spend some time reminiscing about him. And uh, it, it really is interesting how, you know, things like pipes and tobaccos can really bring about so much more discussion. Um, so I hope you enjoyed um, hearing a little bit about the tobaccos that I procured in this little story. Um, the gentleman uh, uh, that, that passed away, um, oddly enough, two years prior at our Christmas pipe club gathering, um, I didn't know it at the time, but he had given a pipe uh, to be sort of raffled. Um, and I actually won that pipe. So let me uh, grab it and show it to you. And uh, we'll finish out the video with uh, taking a look at that. Um, be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back in the flesh. As promised, here is the pipe that I won in the raffle for the 2016 Viking Pipe Club Christmas Holiday Extravaganza. It is a Carl Eric pipe. And if you bear with me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the, uh, the full tour here, uh, smoking pipe style. Just uh, pretend I have white gloves on. Kapow! Nice uh, plateau top there. Um, as you can see, it's a smoker. Um, not necessarily... Uh, the, the, the kind of pipe that I would generally gravitate directly to um, does have a pretty significant bowl here that almost gets the, the whole uh, pinky, and uh, um, that must be good, right? Um, but uh, more than anything, um, it's just a wonderful reminder of, uh, of my friend um, who's no longer here. Um, and uh, armed with uh, these tobaccos, um, it really gives me an opportunity to um, join him, honor him, and um, commune with him. Um, I really like the idea of enjoying his pipe uh, with his blends. Um, it doesn't get much closer than that, I think, um, after someone passes away um, to sort of celebrate an, an old friend. Um, so uh, definitely excited for that. Um, and uh, perhaps I'll take you on that journey too. Look at that plateau. There we go, that, that putting the hand up, that helped, so. Um, well, thank you so much for uh, sticking with me. Um, definitely uh, nice to reminisce about this, and I appreciate to have an audience, um, even a small one, to do that with. So, uh, thank you so much. Uh, until next time, my friends, uh, goodbye. Take care. Farewell.